Jonathan, you come on up and give us the word tonight. Let's give him a good hand clap. Testing. Before I walked up here, I asked Sharon to pray for me. I have a massive headache right now. So how about everybody just reach their hands towards me? Um, <clears throat> our God is healer. <laughs> awesome and power is our God. Lord, I thank you so much for your supernatural power. You have never failed me. Every time, whoop, it's gone. All right, Jesus' name, amen. Wow, there you go. All right. <laughs> there was no need to finish that sentence. <laughs> Wow, okay. Hmm. And for those who feel if you're online or if you're here, they feel like that was staged. Uh, apparently, you don't know the Jesus I know. Um, hi. This message is called Finding Your Purpose, Fighting the Spirit of the Antichrist. Um, Justin, is there any way we can get these turned off, please? Um, and I, I don't like starting with disclaimers, but I don't know where this came from. I was driving, and you know, this, I always assume the Lord's going to tell me what to preach about, and he, he usually does, and um, yesterday he did, and today he continued it. Um, I know I wanted to talk about finding your purpose again, because that's been the, you know, the theme of our month. Um, but then I said, okay, Lord, I, I, I kind of emptied everything that I wanted to talk about last time I preached two weeks ago. And if you were there, um, you know, this whole month, you know, some great things have been said about um, finding your purpose and about helping out the house of the Lord, about us being one body. But then I realized that that is not our only purpose. That if you truly fulfill the purpose that you've been created to be, then you automatically have the weapons to fight in time spirits. If you live the life you were born to live, what's been the staple Pastor Randy taught me here, um, then you know that you have the ability to fight seen and unseen things that would try to impress upon us in these end times. I don't, um, when I say the antichrist, I, I, I would like to also give you this. I'm not talking about the guy of revelations. I'm speaking of the anti-Jesus spirit that is roaming our earth as we're speaking now that would tell you that he is not the Lord, that he is not important enough to be talked about in schools and et cetera, and et cetera. Finding your purpose Fighting the spirit of the Antichrist. Lord, I praise your name. You're amazing. Speak with me. Be with me. May my words be yours. And lead a guide in this conversation amongst brothers and sisters. In Jesus' name, say amen. amen. I want to start off, if you don't guys don't mind, with the Great Commission. The scripture that I started off with two weeks ago. And that's the premise of this all. Matthew 28, 16 through 20. And then the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to you. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Why isn't the Great Commission being talked about anymore? Because when it comes to finding your purpose, it's not just praise and worship leader, it's not just an usher, it's not just cookie ministry or flock care, but I just read to you your other purpose. And in verse 20, and because we are finishing the month of September, talking about finding your purpose. Verse 20 of the Great Commission, and teaching them, who's them? Not us, this world, 
to obey everything I, Jesus, have commanded you. We live in the world that is getting more and more wicked, moving away from the teachings and commandments of Jesus Christ. And for some reason, we believe as Christians, as we separate ourselves, the world is going to find out who Jesus is. But that is not our purpose. That is not our purpose. See, we assume that every Christian... It's a Jesus follower. And then we assume that if you're not a Christian, you're anti-Christ. But how can you be anti-something that you don't even know about? See, there there are anti-Christ spirits. But then there's the harvest that the Bible says is plentiful. And, you know, throughout this whole area of people who don't know who Jesus is. So I wouldn't put them under a category of them being anti-Christ because they're waiting for one of us to introduce them to Christ. Finding your purpose. 1 John 4 and 3, but every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the antichrist which you have heard is coming and is even now already in the world. There's a spirit that roams this world today with the job description of confusing and ridding the world of the precious name of Jesus Christ. And we, as we find our place, must shake this world. We must remember that we were not just created with talents to work only in the house, these four walls of the Lord. But we are called to complete the great commission, teaching them to obey everything Jesus commanded us to do. Some of the peoples of this world are not just haters of what we believe in. You know, they just don't know. I remember um, we were at the RLCI conference in um, you know, the big mothership church in Granville. And um, I believe it was Lee Cummings who spoke, and he said that he was preaching about Noah. And this lady walked up and said to him after the church, she said, she was in her 20s, she said, who's Noah? What's Noah? There, there was a flood? What? A flood? She had no idea because she was never taught. See, we assume everyone knows the creation story that we know. You know, we we assume that everyone knows that David slew Goliath. We assume that everyone knows that the sea was parted. We assume all of these things about the non-Christians. But sometimes they just don't know. And they're waiting for us to fulfill our purpose and teaching them how to obey the commands of Jesus. Ah. Those sinners, I must separate myself from them. Some of y'all laughing, some of y'all done said it. I'm going to allow them to go straight to to hell, and my grandfather would say, well, gasoline draws. Y'all don't get that at all, do y'all? Wow. He was from Mississippi, so I have some southern um, taste for you. But we just... We, we're, we're allowing our neighbors, I'm sorry, we're, we're, allowing, we're allowing our neighbors to go to hell. We're allowing our friends in school to go to hell. We're allowing this stuff because, why? Because we have our ticket, because we know Jesus and that's it. Because we sing and choir, because we have um, somehow, we have created this checklist system of, like, we have arrived But the Bible, before Jesus left, that was one of the last things he told us, to go out. Some of you in this room are only here because somebody opened their mouths and told you about Jesus. And what if you were just pushed to the side and find him on your own? You can find him. That's not what the Lord told us to do. All nations, 
all nations. Y'all need to give me any amens today. I'm feeling this message. I'm feeling it. It is my job to tell Nathaniel and Zeta about Jesus and his commands and the importance of the Bible, salvation through Jesus and the receiving of the Holy Spirit. So when this world tries to introduce to them these anti-Christ ideals, they now have the ability to determine the lies of the world. And according to the Great Commission, my job is not to just inform my kids, but all nations. You see, I, I had to talk to Connie about this on a, as she walked in. Because I know there's scriptures that say we, you know, don't be amongst the worldly. But then I read the Great Commission, and I know from my experience that some of the people I was able to lead to Christ would have never have entered a church on their own account. See, some of us, we, we like to separate ourselves so much, so we all, we have nothing but Christian friends. We have nothing but Christian people around you. I'm telling you, it's good to sharpen yourself, but when are you doing the Great Commission? If we're only finding Christian people everywhere we go, when is somebody else in this world going to get saved? Somebody else needs to hear the band. Somebody else needs to hear Pastor Rick speak. But how are they going to come unless they are invited? Unless we sometimes leave our perfect bubble and walk into the world. Woo! I, I know I'm stepping on some people's stuff today. I, I, I know it. But I'm telling you, this has been on my heart, and, and I, I just can't stand to watch my brothers and sisters not follow through on your complete purpose. Your complete purpose is when you study the word to speak it out to the nations. Bring them in and introduce them to Jesus. Teaching them how to obey. Baptizing them, introducing them to the Father and the Holy Spirit. These are foreign Chinese, Japanese forms to people who don't know who Jesus is. I say again, how is Gratia County, Alma, Ithaca, or St. Louis going to know the truth of Jesus Christ if we don't bring them the message? Introduce the relationship compared to rules and regulations. Church, these four walls, it's like boot camp where we learn the words of Jesus and, and how to live a holy life under God. Now, follow me here, because the Lord shared this with me in college. Somebody asked me in college, um, why do you go to church? And it rose up in me. Man, it's like boot camp. I go to church and Pastor Ron in Mount Pleasant, he teaches me how to fight devils. He teaches me how to live a holy life. So when I leave that place and go on college campus, I don't got to be tempted by booze. I don't got to be tempted by this, by that. I can live right. Amen. But like any boot camp, nobody that shows up to boot camp, they're recruiters for boot camps. I remember in high school, when I was somewhat good at sports, um, these naval guys were there, and they were telling me how good the Navy football team was. And they were, you know, they were giving me brochures or pictures of, you know, the campus life, telling me stories on how, you know, we beat Army, blah, blah, you know, blah, 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 it's okay, whatever. But they had stories. They told me testimonies of the Navy to get me to that boot camp. And if I would have gone to that boot camp after some time there when I left, I would have been Navy. See, some of us, we're expecting Gratiot County, um, you know, Harvest to come to boot camp, but none of us are willing to recruit. We simply have to tell our testimony. No one can refute that. You know, there's all these smart people out there saying, you know, you know, there's no proof, but no one can refute your testimony, your change, your experience, you hearing his voice, seeing his face. No one can refute that. I tell you, church, it is time for us to recruit. It is time for us to leave these walls, to leave our comfortable house, and to tell people about Jesus Christ. <laughs> There's minds that need to be conformed in this area. There's healing that needs to happen in this area. And guess what? Some of these people won't listen to Joni. 
They'll listen to you, though. They'll listen to you because you're close. You're their neighbor. Y'all kids playing the same sports team, and they're just waiting. See, we assume. I'm getting jumping ahead of my notes. I hate when I do this. But it's meant to happen now. We assume that non-Christians haven't already have received seeds from somebody else. See, that's what you got to, all right? All right, so follow me real quick, okay? Because I've, you know, I've had people around me who are not saved, and I plant a seed, you know, say something about Jesus here and there. And those things stick. See, if they come past you, and if you don't obey and come to them, that can be the seed that breaks the camel's back right there. See, we assume that they're just devilish, they know nothing about nothing, and you don't know what grandma had already taught them. You don't know that they actually were in Sunday school their whole life. You don't know what their history is, but we assume by looking at them, their tattoos, their, you know, you know their ears are all, you know, got holes in them, whatever. You know, their hair may be different colors. We look at them, we assume they must not even know anything of him. So we just walk right past them. And the Lord says, really? They need me as much as you need me. Feeling this, man. (laughs) I know some of y'all don't agree with me, but hey, let's roll. Before before boot camp, there's always a recruiting process that takes place. If we don't, they have a greater chance to become deceived. A greater chance. When do we break our silence? How long do we allow people to believe there's a Santa before we tell them he is not real? They don't look kids in here, right? That just ruined their lives. <laughs> Mommy, you're a liar. <laughs> My brother-in-law was 13 when somebody told him. I was like, are y'all serious? Lord have mercy. My dad never let that go down. <laughs> Mm-mm, I pay for them things. Ain't, ain't, ain't no unhealthy white brother coming down our chimney giving you stuff. No, 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 no. <laughs> but we're, we're, allowing, we're allowing the myths of our faith to last because we, we, we just don't want to say it. We're allowing these things to happen in our community because we won't open our mouths. You know, I heard Dr. Barkley say, you know what, why, you know, it's a, some of you are so upset, but why aren't you going to the PTA meetings? Some of you are so upset, but why aren't you running for office? Some of you are so upset, why aren't you putting yourself into the government system and, you know, becoming lawyers, becoming all these different things, and you complain? We need you to recruit. We need Christian teachers. We need Christian lawyers, Christian presidents who really are Christian. Not if we're running away in our communities, staying with only Christians. Sounds like a cult. But you don't have to believe me. We believe the word is the truth. Believe the word. You may not like the the delivery tonight. I may have rubbed you the wrong way, but don't believe me. Believe the word of God. That says, get out of your house and spread the word of me. That's what I love about her. Lacey, I love that about you. We had a church picnic. Lacey running around the people. You want to get baptized? (laughs) She got got cookies with her. Hey, 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 you want a cookie? Eat this cookie. You want to get baptized? (laughs) Why not? Why not? Why not? It's so important for us to do this because Matthew 24 and 24 says, For false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive. And if people, if possible, I'm sorry, even the elect, which means they won't just deceive sinners. If we don't watch it, they may deceive some of us. But how do you stop this? By introducing Jesus to people and by reading your Bible to know Jesus. 
First of all, as a Christian, you know you cannot be deterred in this life if you know who Jesus is. No one can come, no one can come in my house and tell me who Alice is. That's my lady. We dated for 10 years before we got married. All right, 10 years. I, somebody can blind me, do anything they want, and, you know, say, whose voice is this? That's Alice's voice. When you know Jesus that much, when someone falls, it's going to come. It has come. It is here, this anti-spirit. And some, even the church people, will believe it's true because you don't know Jesus. This is not a religious hangout. No, Jesus. Man, I'm feeling this tonight. Man. John 4, 1 through 6. Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. This is how you can recognize the spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist which you have heard is coming and even now is already in the world. You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. They are from the world and therefore speak from the viewpoint of the world. And the world listens to them. We are from God and whoever knows God listens to us. But whoever is not from God does not listen to us. This is how we recognize the spirit of truth and the spirit of falsehood. There will be times when we talk to someone from this world, they just don't want to receive it. That's okay. We move on. Just because we get one rejection does not stop. Doesn't stop. The world would not always listen to us when we introduce Jesus Christ. But remember, when we are talking to a worldly person, just consider to yourself, there already may be a seed in them. Mom or grandma or dad used to sing those old spirituals or, or used to sing those hymnals or used to take them to church. And so they know something. Some of you tonight are hearing me and you're thinking, Joni is right. I need to talk about Jesus more and introduce him to people that I know. But how good do you know Jesus? I remember I, I was a part of... Um, well, in college, I did everything. I, I, I was a part of student government. I was in a fraternity. I was in so many different groups, played drums for so many different people. I just didn't believe in um, being still. And I wish I would have known what kids were like, and I would have been still then, and, and I would have maybe not been tired now. Uh, <laughs> all the parents know what I'm talking about. Um, but I remember we have senior farewell for a lot of our organizations on college, on, on college campus. I remember my fraternity brothers, we were all together and we were doing a ritual. It's about 40 of us and they all had to say something about me. What, and one guy stood up and said, John, I see Jesus in you. I looked at him and I went, what? Because this brother has seen me fall over and over again, drinking, doing stuff, but he also saw me recover, recover. And by my senior year, I was living right. So he saw that and he said, I don't know who Jesus is, but if he's anything like you, and they give us fraternity names and they said, we couldn't call you Jesus because we think that a little bit blasphemous, but we want to call you Noah because that's the only other Bible character we know. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, that's still funny to me. But 39 fraternity brothers who knew nothing of the Lord except for my lifestyle and my recovery and my lifestyle by my senior year, they knew something was different about me. They were able to see it. And they couldn't point to anything else, not counseling, not Man, it has to be this Jesus thing that he's talking about. And John, and they call me John, you know what, John, we don't know who Jesus is, but man, you, you look like Jesus. You act like him. 
What if I would have only joined a Christian fraternity? What if I would have not even talked to these gentlemen because they were different than me? And guess what that is now? That's a seed planted in those other 39 gentlemen. So one day when those gentlemen walk past you or walk past somebody else and say something about Jesus, they can say, I knew someone who knew Jesus. and You act just like them. What is this Jesus thing? Another thing happened. I flew to Romania, and I got a lot of, um, my dad knows a lot of ministers, so I wrote a letter, gave it to him, and I got all this money from ministers. I had some money left over, and one of the girls on our trip couldn't go because she was lacking some money. I had some money left. I had to decide, do I want to buy some new Michael Jordans? Or do I sow into this girl who was just, man, she was, she was that. She was that thing. She was, I don't want to say bad, but she was bad. Lord, have mercy. Um, like fought and just drank. And, I mean, she was that person. So I met with her and her mother. I said, you know what? I'm a believer in the Lord. I said, apparently you must have been praying about getting some money and both of their eyes got big. I was like, because I got $245 left from my money, from you know, all my donations. I would love for you to have it. They both just start bawling. I'm sitting there like, what's, what's going on? We never prayed before. We prayed before you walked in a room, said, Lord, we need $245 to finish the trip. Seeds planted. I could have told the Lord she's a sinner. That's my money. But the Great Commission speaks louder than selfish ambition. The Great Commission speaks louder than skin color. The Great Commission speaks louder than the wealth of knowledge of the Bible. The Great Commission speaks louder than any stereotype or ideology that you may hold tonight. Go to all nations. The word of God trumps. The word of God leads. The word of God fuels us to fight the Antichrist, that spirit. And the best way for you not to be deceived tonight, ladies and gentlemen, who are Christians in this room, is to read the Bible. John 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The Antichrist cannot overcome it. That spirit cannot overcome it. And if you don't know the scripture, the word is Jesus. So when you read your Bible, you are getting to know Jesus. When you do your devotional, you are getting closer to Jesus. And when that darn antichrist spirit try to enter your house, you defeat them with Jesus. Every knee. Every tongue confess that he is Lord. By the word of God, Christians, that's how we put bullets in our spiritual gun. By the word of God, by knowing the words of Jesus, how he reacted in situations, when you know who he is, when you have that relationship with him, because this is your purpose, when you open your mouth, you can express to anyone who doesn't know him who Jesus is. I can express to you who my wife is. She doesn't need to be here. I can describe her. I can, you know, the height, you know, color of her hair, you know, her eyes. You know, I can tell you what she's smart in. I can tell you her degrees. I can tell you everything because I know her. 
when it's time to defend our faith, some of us get mad because you don't know anything. You just going to hell because you're going to hell. <laughs> I don't need to know. I don't need to know the scripture about it. I'll fight you. We've met those Christians. You're bringing a knife to a gunfight and the devil is laughing at you. The Antichrist spirit is going to come with knowledge, ladies and gentlemen. The devil came to Jesus with knowledge. The devil knew the scriptures, and Jesus slapped them back with scriptures. It is written. Man, I wish I could have saw that. I bet, you know, Jesus walking hungry, like, oh, man, Lord, this, these rocks starting to look good, Lord, you know. And, and here comes Satan talking smack, and the Lord said, man, it is written. If I could have been there for that moment. The devil still came back. <sighs> devil, it is written. The anti-spirit is consuming our government. The anti-spirit is consuming our, our public school system. The anti-Christ spirit is consuming even some of the public figures that we have voted for. And now they're changing their minds they're doing things that are against what we believe in it's because it's the anti-spirit you know what when I when I moved here I was I was against homeschool you know I, I won't lie to you but in the recent last couple of weeks you know I told the Lord deal with me if this like why is this an issue for me and the Lord began to show me how why it's important to do it it may not be for every family but do the research. That's what my wife tells me, I tell you. Do your research. I still haven't thought about if I'm going to do it for my kids or not. But I know if those darn teachers come down with some antichrist stuff to my kids, they're going to meet the wrong side of Jonathan Glenn that day. They're going to meet Leona Glenn. And you don't want to meet... You don't want to meet Lily. Because this like Steve preached on a couple months ago about how it's the parents' job to protect and clean off our kids from some of this unholy things. And I'm telling you, and you know, in some of your, you know, like homeschool experiences, they are being protected while learning, while growing. I understand now. Dave likes me a little more now. Dave Snyder. Love you too, bro. But the importance is not separating. The importance of it is comparing their minds to know Jesus. Because Satan is after the next generation of mustards, he's after us. If you know your Jesus and you have a relationship with him, not just a religion, when the world brings his anti-spirit to your door trying to convince you something different about your Jesus, you will have the power to fight. Remember, it's your Jesus. If we reread verse 20 again from the commission, it says to teach them what I, Jesus, have commanded you. And his commands are in what book? The Bible. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's just a lack of knowledge. Maybe, maybe we don't speak to our neighbors because we, we, we think we won't have the answers. Maybe we don't speak at our workplace because we think we may not have the answer. But I'm telling you, if you, I don't know about you guys, but the presence of the Lord is real. And when people have come at me, and, I mean, even when my knowledge of this wasn't even 100%, when it came at me, my spirit man rose up and, I, and stuff started coming out. And I was done. I was like, man, I remember, now I remember that scripture. Because at some time in my life, I was sitting in the church just watching my dad preach, and something must have stuck. <laughs> it's important to know the Bible. It's important to know the Bible because in it is the knowledge of healing. In it is the knowledge that you are not your own, that you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. 
in it is the understanding of who you are in Christ. In it, you get to know not only Jesus, but Jesus said he did everything that the Father will. So by knowing Jesus, guess what? You know God. And the other part of him is in you when you have accepted him. So do you know what you believe tonight? Because it is your purpose to know that we believe in God the Father. Oof. It is your purpose to know that we believe in Jesus Christ the Son. It is your purpose to know that we believe in the Holy Spirit, that we believe in the crucifixion, that we believe in the resurrection, and that he's coming back again. It's important that you know these things. And pastor said last week, it's okay to read, you know, revelations and find out that we win this thing. <laughs> I just hear, wake up. Wake up, church. Time is winding down. Wake up. If we are supposed to model our life on Christ, he came to serve. We must serve. We must care for others, sometimes even more than ourselves. Oh, Jesus. Connie said something to me earlier. She said, just because you don't run to the altar doesn't mean that Jesus is not at your seat. We got we to gotta, we gotta destroy these stereotypes. If, if you come to this altar, that's because you want to, not because we force you or because we have created the stigma or the um, schema that this is the only place where Jesus dwells. But I just told you that you're the temple. So during worship, if you get your mind right, wherever you are, sitting, standing, coming up, guess what? He is going to meet with you. Oh. Oh, Lord, stop. Raise your hand if you pray in the spirit. Don't be ashamed if you don't. I'm not going to send the ushers at you. My father taught me this. You can put your hands down. He said, Joni, every morning, it doesn't need to be publicly. You pray in the spirit for a couple minutes. I'm like, why, Dad? I remember being in middle school. I said, why? He said, have you, have you ever tried to start an engine in cold weather? I said, yeah. He said, sometimes you got to rev that engine up. And what it speaking in tongues do for me in my quiet prayer life is it prepares me. My spirit man, it's like, it's like your spirit man is lifting weights. And I don't know about you ladies, but sometimes in the guys, we lift weights in the mirror at our gym. So sitting there just like, is, is. And when you speak in the tongues, your spirit man is just, come on, come on, come on. And I don't, you know, I, I, you have to do this every day if you do this. I'm sorry. You have to do this every day. Because what happens is when, when these spirits try to enter your children, when we try to enter you, now you're on so, such high alert in the spiritual realm, they can't get past you. You begin to sense things like, oh, 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 who are you, young man? Why are you hanging out with my son? I don't know you. I don't know your mom and daddy. I'm going to need you to leave my house because you felt something. It, my, I was doing this. I came out the room and something said, Nathaniel's watching something inappropriate. Boop. Turn around. I walked up to him. He said, Daddy, I don't think I should be watching this. I'm like, and I looked over and it's some witch episode of, of some cartoon that he likes. Teaching moment. I said, son, you're right. This is inappropriate because of this. So let's just turn the channel. I could have not listened. I could have allowed that spirit in my house. I could have allowed my son to be victim 
of a spirit because I have no relationship. See, if you are a parent in this room, your purpose is you lift spiritual weights, not just for you anymore. Your kids. Your kids. When my kids get sick, I get upset because I know the deal. I know the word. And, I, you know, it's, my kids don't get sick because of Satan all the time. I know that. But I still kick Satan's butt when it happens. My, heck no. In the name of Jesus, that Leona come out again. And some of you don't know my mother. I pray one day you get a chance to watch her preach, man. This, this prophet said once about her when he met her, he said, ooh. He said, you freaked the devil out. <laughs> He told her, the moment you open your eyes, demons freak out and they scatter. I want that reputation. How about you guys? Let me digress. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always until the very end of age. I pray that the Lord would show you not only your purpose, in this church body, but I pray that he will also show you how you fulfill the great commission in your life as you go out proclaiming the name of Jesus and introducing him in a relationship sense to your neighbors and to the people of our surrounding area. And if you're so blessed, to the country, and to this world. Bow your heads with me. Father, we've had tears tonight. We've had laughter, clapping. But at the end of the, the night, we want to just be in right standing with you. We, we, we want to live this life that we were born to live, not just our talents or our creative ability, whatever you have given us, Lord, but we want to wake up, just like you said, and spread the news on how to obey your commands. But it starts with our understanding and our knowledge of the word that you have given us. Help us to not believe what the world says about the Bible, about it's an old book, but the Old Testament has, has no relevance on how we're just a New Testament church, so we only should read the New Testament. Help us to, to throw that stuff to the side and, and know that every word in the Bible was given to us through the Spirit of God. And Lord, we believe in the Bible, and we believe in the Word, and your Word says that it was Jesus. So as we read the word, Father, may we be engaged against the Antichrist in this area. When we see horrible situations in our schools, may we not run, but may we introduce Jesus to the PTA meetings. When we see horrible situations in our local government, Father, may we not run, but may we join the city council. May we run for mayor. May we run for governor, Father, because we don't run alone. We run with you, with the desire of spreading you in this world. Forgive us for only talking about our disappointments and not acting out on what you have given us. Forgive us for keeping you a secret, putting you in a box and putting you in the closet. But you are not a secret. For you are glorious and we want the world to know who you are. Give us wisdom tonight to recruit the people that you want us to. 
Give us the strength to deal with disappointment if someone laughs at us to move on to carry out the great commission. I would like for you guys to stand with me if you, if you would say that you want to come a big prayer, just me saying it, I'm not going to call you up, but stand with me if you want to do the Great Commission better. Stand with me if you will. Father, you see us. I'm not even lifting my head to see who's standing because it's between you and them. You see us, Lord. You, you see us standing. I'm standing here, too. I've been comfortable, Lord, as being, you know, the, you know, the music director. I've been comfortable just, you know, hanging out with the youth. I've been too comfortable. Lord, forgive me for forgetting my purpose of why you've given me these skills is to, is to continue the Great Commission. So, Father, I pray over all my brothers and sisters in this room, and I say, Lord, that you will give us the strength to speak when we need to speak, to plant seeds when we need to plant, to hand out our cards when we need to hand out our cards, but to be a light in this community and help us, Lord, to know the word more. So as we go out and, and run towards the harvest that is plentiful, that we will know what we're standing on. And no other God or false prophet will we believe. If you believe that, say amen. Thank you.